Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to the Freddie and Alyssa show. We have an incredible guest here with us today, and we're very excited to introduce her, but we're going to keep you waiting for like 45 seconds. For like at least 45 seconds. Or maybe 45 minutes. Maybe You'll have minute. to just wait and see. <laughs> um, but today's episode is sponsored. I'm going to kick this one over to you again because you just knocked this out of the park. Thanks, baby. Yeah, today's episode is sponsored by Pandia Health. Pandia Health makes sure that no one runs out of birth control on their watch. Uh, babe, I don't know if you have ever gone through this, but when you're a gal on the go and you're busy and you're out and about, it's really difficult when you get home and you're getting ready and you get your birth control out and it's completely used up. You have no more left. I hate when that happens. Oh yeah. my gosh, the absolute worst. So uh, with Pandia Health, you can get your uh, prescription delivered to you. You skip the pharmacy every single month. They deliver it for free with like little goodies, a little chocolate, a little tea. And what's really cool is if you don't have an active prescription of birth control, you can utilize uh, Pandia's amazing network of doctors. And it's only $29 a year. $29 Great. a year. You can get $5 off using Alyssa and Freddie. And um, they're amazing. We love Pandia Health. They have so much on their website. If you guys want to go check them out, Pandia Health. Again, Alyssa and Freddie at checkout. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Pandia Health. We appreciate the support. Um, and now, did we make them wait 45 minutes? Well, I, no. I don't okay. know. Okay, without further maybe, ado. Maybe, maybe we should do that. I feel like our, our guest over here, I love how we're acting like it's a surprise when her name is already in the title of the episode and she's sitting there going, guys. People know what they clicked on. You haven't gotten any better in four months. I was here four months ago and your lame jokes at the beginning aren't hitting. I can read it all over her face. Without further ado, Molly Burnett and the clap track. Yeah. We don't have a clap track yet either. That's on the to-do list. Oh, okay. You know when they go, ah, and you hear the yeah. clap track. Or all different kinds of weird sounds. You just have that little board thing, and you yeah. do. It's like, ah. yeah. You can pick whichever one you want. No laugh track, just whatever strange sound. Great. You let us know. It's That'd be awesome. Fun. Okay, fun I'll start done. brainstorming. <laughs> Probably some one of Mac Miller's ad libs, like my oh. text message thing. You've had that for years. Forever. What's he do? Huh? Press. The- <laughs> Press the piece to my idol. Aha. Yeah, a little bit closer. Peter Griffin, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm what a it needs to be. guy now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. my gosh! How are you guys doing? We're we're Just good. Amazing, yeah. It feels. I feel like January was an entire year, but then I feel February made up for. It went by like so fast. Oh, January okay. dragged. February has just been speeding by. It's mm-hmm. already going to be the first. I don't know when we're going to release this, but uh, yeah. we're filming this like. Or a month or a week away from March first already. That's insane. And birthday we have birthdays month. coming up. Yeah. We do. We We're, do. You're not going to be in town for your birthday. I'm not going to be in town. Maybe you guys should come out and we'll do a little uh, girl birthday. Girl. I think that'd be really cool. Well, what do you? What, where are you going to be? Where, where are you going to be uh, for your birthday? <laughs> what's what's <laughs> going on? You are you getting ready really for Magazine news. Street or Bourbon Street? I'm getting a little bit of both. A little Ooh, bit of both. My I'm going to be in New Orleans. I'm going to live there. I'm moving there for a couple months. Really? Please tell us some more. Because I'm going to be um, uh, for Queen of the South this year. <gasps> yeah, clap, clap. I really needed it. Aha. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. I apologize in advance to everyone listening. And for the three Mac Miller fans that understand this, this is for you guys. Represent. Represent. <laughs> That's hip still to say, right? Yeah, I don't know. Represent. So, okay, you're going to move there. You're leaving when? Next week. Next Sometime. week. Yeah, Eloise and I are going to hit the road. And where are you staying? What's happening? We're, uh, I think we have a place on, um, right near Magazine Street. Okay. Cool. Which is amazing because it, that's the most beautiful place in New Orleans. And I have this woman who saved me and um, we uh, got a little place. And so I think, yeah, I think that's what we're going we're gonna to do. How crazy is the industry that you get? It's not like, oh, you're going to do another season or this is happening. You know, it'll be in three months. This, this industry, I feel like when you book something, it's yeah. just like in four days mm-hmm. we need you to 100%. Mm-hmm. pack up and like go. We're shooting. We're moving. Yeah. My brother and I were joking about this last night, I think. He's like, this is the only industry, not that this is necessarily the case, but this is the only industry where you can be like, 
if I don't make money in the next three days, I'm going to have to sell my place to like, I have generational wealth <laughs> in a phone yeah, call all of a sudden. Yeah. And you're like, what the wow, isn't that H true? happened? Did yeah. you see? I, I'm trying to censor my self, my oh, cussing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you're the first guest that we have. Um, we, we sit down and before we record, we go, okay, so we have some house rules now. And we go through, <laughs> we can't say this. We can't say this. We shouldn't talk about this. We should go through this. Um, I had to get pre. I had to get prepped. You had to get yeah. prepped. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, but I also think there's some kind of excitement about the good side of that. Yeah. That there's we are a phone call away. Yeah. From something incredible happening in our mm-hmm. lives that bring us to a new place mm-hmm. or to meet new people um, for a, a payday. I mean, mm-hmm. there's just so many yeah. to be challenged. Just get to do what you love. Yeah. Yeah, and. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really unique because there's times when you don't have that option. It's it's almost like you can plan like a year or two ahead, mm-hmm. but then you know exactly what you're going to make. You're going to know mm-hmm. exactly what you're going to do, which is secure and feels good. Mm-hmm. But I love that you could get a phone call that like changes everything or mm-hmm. speeds up that process. Mm-hmm. So that's super dope. And that's what I was saying when we heard. I was like, I'm, I'm like jealous in a good way of just how cool it is. I would love to go somewhere for three months and be yeah. paid to do that and yeah. to be doing what I love to do, like you said. like That's the mm-hmm. gift, right, is that you really, I mean, that's this is all I've ever wanted to do my whole life. And so you get to go move to one of the most magical cities in the world and just go live there for three months and get out of L.A., which is nice in and of itself, and mm-hmm. just go have like a little bit of an eat, pray, love moment, I think. Not to be corny, <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm going to go do. Yeah. Well, because you'll only be working what you said two or three days a week, so you'll have a lot of time. I think to so. Yeah. And do your thing, which yeah. you're in a new city, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, okay. I, there'll be sometimes it'll be a day, maybe it'll be two days, maybe it'll be five days. Like it, it sure. changes all the time. Different. But so you have different, um, yeah, a lot of opportunities to go, just try and yeah, Ooh, explore a new there. city. Oh. I'm so excited. So we, and we and we'll definitely come s- say what's up because we've never been to New Orleans and yeah, which is crazy because New Orleans is so up our alley. I would have thought yeah. for sure you guys would have been to New Orleans. I don't know what we never. I feel like we haven't gone on vacation. Like we've done a lot of traveling, but we haven't. It's always seemed to be for work. Mm-hmm. I think the only time we went on vacation was to Hawaii like five years ago, yeah. where we we didn't go for any other reason but just to like kick it. Mm-hmm. So I think New Orleans will be that. <laughs> Just to kick it? Yeah. That's, that's, I made it worse. People are going to see this episode. It's going to be like, so we had, and then we were going to be like, edit it all out. By the way, though, best breakfast place I've ever been to in my life. Heavenly. The recommendation. Oh, because you were just there. In Hawaii. I was just there. Just by myself. Yeah. Hanging out. Heavenly is a good place. Yeah. It's Isn't amazing. It delish? It's amazing. It's, what did you get? Do you remember? Eggs Benedict. Oh, yeah. The best. And their green juice and their coffee and their Eggs Benedict. But the it was the purple potatoes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Of course mm-hmm. you do. That were so amazing. They're so amazing. You know what else I really enjoyed for the first time when I was in Hawaii? Oh, God. Is, um, so many time to know because you should enjoy much. <laughs> <laughs> there's um, a vampire style pork taco i think it was pork yes i think because i had a lot of yes. pork while i was there but the, the taco they call it vampire star where the cheese is like uh baked on the outside of the mm-hmm. shell and so i used i do that at home sometimes now where i'll put down the tortilla put a little yeah. cheese and i'll flip it and like burn the cheese on it a little so that it like hardens on the shell huh. and i learned that in hawaii some people surf others look at the beautiful <laughs> thing and i eat tacos with cheese on the well, shell. well and i was gonna say a vampire taco that's not at all what i thought a vampire taco was gonna be I thought it was gonna be like blood was in some way a hundred percent involved, and it's pork, so it's not fully cooked. And oh, now I'm no. nervous. The oh. cheese was, oh. was out of left field. I didn't know. Yeah, he did that enjoy was... it. I remember you got this. He did enjoy times. it. <laughs> would you ever? Would you ever? You two are the that? only ones that go to Hawaii, and your best your best things you take back is her breakfast place and your vampire taco. That's this. <laughs> I think we rented a car and we drove to the place where they shot um, what Jurassic movie was Park. That? No, uh, Saving Sarah Marshall or Forgetting Sarah. Marshall. Forget. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The turtle. What's Turtle the... Turtle, turtle Bay. Bay. Turtle yes. Bay. That mm-hmm. was really cool driving up there. Yeah. That's so like out of beautiful. our normal type of uh, activity that we do. Yeah. Would you ever live there? 
No. No. Too no. far away from everything, isn't it? I'd go insane, I think. I it's so beautiful, but I um I I need to be moving around. I'd love to shoot like a show out there for a couple months. Yeah. So put that yeah. out there in the universe, <laughs> Hawaii Five O or whatever. That'd be great. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun. But I think as far as living there, there's not enough um I need like New York City style busy work. Hmm. LA busy like I need to be moving around. I'm insane. Yeah, it's a little little show. I feel I could do Hawaii, though, at yeah. this stage in my life. Oh, I yeah. love it. I just really loved Hawaii, though. It's, it's just, beautiful. Oh, so I totally get why. Magic. I yeah. just feel like the time difference. It, it, Cause so like, far. Because now, imagine, like, in the East Coast, like, if you wake up at 9, it's already 3 in the afternoon in New York. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's it's a 12-hour flight for our family. Yeah. and like it's, it's hard. It's far. That would be really... That's... Well, Florida hours, is yeah. the Hawaii... Of the mainland, have you ever heard that? I know. I, I, I heard it. Florida is as close as you can get to the U.S. without being in it. <laughs> Florida has a lot of mixed reviews. Remember that meme that was going around where if you type in your birthday and go a Florida man, and then type in a date of in that your August. Bo- oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's always an insane like oh. crime that it was. You know what I heard? Like when's your, her, 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 yeah, April listen, 10th? My, April twenty third. Oh yeah. But <laughs> when are you June forty uh, seven? <laughs> Really yeah, or birthday cake you're like your birthday's in two and a half weeks you're early <laughs> on april 23rd of last year florida man and easter bunny brawl is a fugitive and talks about his furry fist fight <laughs> that adds up yeah that like feels right sh- that feels right but i heard the reason we know so many crazy things about florida is because they don't have they're, they're the one state that doesn't have a law saying you can't release like criminal or you can release criminal activity, like records, things that have happened. There's no law protecting, keeping that quiet. So this kind of weird, I'm sure an Easter Bunny's brawling people in Cleveland, Ohio too, but it's protected by whatever the law would be there. And Florida is just kind of like, we don't really. If you do something stupid, we're (laughs) going to snitch on all (laughs) y'all. Because Florida is the South. I know. I it's just of it. Florida is so different. Yeah. Different, like a cup, an hour away, a couple yeah. hours away. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. I still think we're gonna end up there eventually. I know. And Florida's just... still beautiful. Miami's <sighs> stunning. I like the like where you grew up at part. Like, yeah, me too. <laughs> the Parkland, Coral Springs, but Fort Lauderdale, Miami is awesome too. You're really? close enough to the enter- to the action as well. Yeah. You know. Sure. Yeah, she just wants to be by a city. Yeah. <laughs> like where they throw city. beads at you. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, they get some beads over there in New Orleans. <laughs> what do you think street. of New York City? Speaking, I of love New York. Medium, I yeah, sense. I was actually thinking about because I I would just wanted to get out of LA for a little bit, and I was thinking about maybe moving there for. Yeah. I, I this was recently. I was thinking like maybe I'll sublet my place for a little bit and just go mm. move to New York. And um, after pilot season, I think I was really thinking about doing that. But now I'm now maybe I get to get out of here. Go after you shoot, like yeah. during the summer. And yeah. Try it while it's- I mean, it gets a little hot. Go right in here for a couple months, yeah. Because I went to school in, um, for the year I gave my parents. I went to school in New York in, on Staten Island. That's so right. I spent a lot of time in the city, and I love I love New York City. I love Broadway. I love mm. all of that stuff. So the I best. would love to live there. But also, like, your apartment is the size of this, and you got to yeah. be. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. Do you, have, do you have, like, a lot of friends there that you would stay, or not stay with, but, I mean, would you feel like you're going to go out, like, rogue or do you have people that you would I don't have anybody really like I have some friends from college that I could hit up and they'd be like hey it's been 12 years Molly and I'd be like hey I live here now and they'd be like I have a family and we live in Hoboken we're not gonna do shots you you guys aren't down to go to the bar down the street and get blacked out I don't want to rip 2.30 in the morning no I get it I get it I get it they're like you're 32 (laughs) go start a family why I'm here. I'm in the, I'm in the city. <laughs> I saw a meme. Will, Will Will showed me a meme that was like 40 year old guys in LA be like, "All right, so what's the move tonight, guys? The move is to go settle down and start a family, Kevin. You're 42. <laughs> what's the move? It is tonight? so true. You got 40 year olds wow. out here going, "All right, what club are we gonna hit up?" And it's like, no mm. clubs. Mm. I'm gonna hit up no clubs. You don't really feel the pressure in LA. Like I feel like it, like like every one of our friends who's not in LA, everyone's pregnant, everyone has kids, yeah, and I feel like if we were all, a lot. it would be different. Everyone. I'm sure I'd still like be single and lonely, but if we, if we if we were in you know another state, yeah. 
Wouldn't it just seem funny, like, you just, like, show up all the time, and it's, like, you're, like, the people, the friends of the family, and they're just, like, there's that the crazy s- LA. Couple. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like, yes. their kids are all 14. 100%. All of our, all of my cousins have, like, three, two, three beautiful children each, and we do the family reunion, and I'm like, hey! <laughs> And they're like, what's so they grab their kids, cover their ears. They're this like, just, just be nice to her. I'm like, what's up? They're like, she's gonna die alone. It's fine. Don't learn from your aunt. Go play with your. <laughs> <laughs> My brother shows up. He's like, hey. And they're like, oh, no, not him either. Like, don't watch the Renettes. Oh my you know God. what we're living in? It's 2020. The rules have changed now. We're just we're just living our lives. They have changed. But are there any like specific traits or qualities that you feel? you get along really well with or that you think oh my gosh like whoever I'm dating next like this they gotta have totally so you know you know when you have a conversation with somebody and you can get to that next level Mm -hmm. like of depth Mm -hmm. so we can talk about um politics and it's not just like oh I like Bernie oh I like Warren oh I hate Trump it's like all right well let's talk about why Buddha judge um is the first homosexual mayor of Indiana, which is Mike Pence country, and let's go into that. Let's talk like, 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 mm-hmm. like, let's when you can reach that next level with somebody, you'd be surprised how few people you can actually do that with. Hmm. And that might just be here in this town, sure. But I, I, I really need to be intellectually stimulated because I'm really curious and I want to talk about everything. And I want, but I also want to, I want to know that you're listening to me when I talk because I'm listening to you when you talk Mm -hmm. so I'm not thinking about what I need to say next to rebuttal you I'm actually taking in what you have to say and absorbing it and thinking about it and then returning with my thoughts and so that means that if we don't agree with something that's just as great as if we do agree because I genuinely want to hear what you have to say and you do too and I think that's the the roadblock that I have found dating here at least is that you I give a lot because I'm very curious, but then it's not really reciprocated. Because hmm. we have a it, we have a pretty yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's, well, it's interesting too because you genuinely are a good listener. Yeah, Thank you me. can always see it on like you're very. Uh, you always nod your head. You listen, <laughs> but you're in it. Like you're yeah, like what you're we connected. say, even as friends, and like and I, and I think that's why we've all built such depth. Is that we both like listen and are curious about the other person Yeah, and you can see, cause there's a lot of times too that you'll talk to people and you can see that they're like listening on autopilot, but they're already onto something right, else. Yeah. Right. And, um, and I think it makes you too, it makes you a better actor. It makes you a better friend. It makes you a better everything. Yeah. If you just listen and try to understand and it helps you kind of level out with your emotions as well. Totally. I think if you're not listening or open, you're going to easily be triggered in one way or another. Yeah. Like if you just are kind of like, that's what I'm trying to get to, like, as an ideal thing, where no matter what anyone were to ever say to me, that it never gets my heart rate up, even internally if I don't show it, because I just feel like that's when you have full control. I think the most powerful thing you can have is if somebody, like, flicks you off and goes, F you in the car, and you're just, like, unaffected. You don't get this rage where you want to go get a golf club and smash their windows out. That was more a younger version of me. Right. We now don't I have just... to go through that process. But you know what's fascinating? Dax, Dax Shepard, whose podcast is amazing, mm-hmm. he had um, this guy on who was the, the lead interrogator for the FBI. Ooh. And he has a course that he teaches about how to talk to people, how to get what you want, how to do, you know, the psychology behind it. Mm-hmm. And he said, when somebody raises their voice to you, you literally get a chemical reaction that tells you to heighten your blood pressure and raise your voice back. So it's about fighting that impulse because your your hardwiring is going to literally make you feel like you have to respond by yelling. Hmm. Yeah. And so we said the best interrogators are the ones that have that late night talk show voice like, "All right. So, tell me about yourself." Mm. Because that that's calming and if I talk to you like that, I'm triggering your whatever thing in your brain makes to you feel calm. To let the wall down. Yes, exactly. Wow. Exactly. But you got to practice it. It doesn't come I've been come trying naturally. so, like, there's so many times that, but I think just taking 15 minutes and sometimes if it's, like, a really emotional thing to take a day, mm-hmm. you literally, there's times I wake up and I just go, thank God that I just, because yeah. I don't care at all now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was about to go and feel like sh- like crap about something. 
for weeks because I was going to tell somebody off. Yeah, and then yeah, I was yeah. just so glad I just let it go yeah. because now there's just... It doesn't just matter. Not, yeah. Yeah, instead of jumping on even text messages, phone calls, it never goes well if you don't give yourself time to come back down to even before having the combo. Well, yeah. and you know what's also a fascinating thing that I've noticed, at least personally, is with, with technology and, and this instant gratification, we are so not patient anymore. Mm-hmm. So because you can get in contact with somebody, if you don't for a day, like my current situation that we've been talking about that we won't address, but I'll just say that, if you don't talk for like a day or hear from somebody for like yeah. a day, you, you're you like, what the heck? Oh my gosh. And we've forgotten that you have to let people go through a journey before yeah. maybe you guys are going to discuss stuff. Yeah. You know? 100%. And, and I don't know. It's I, I feel like we're, we've totally lost our ability to be patient. Because our attention it. spans getting smaller and smaller, yeah. and we just how, become how a little entitled to quick responses. Absolutely. Like I'll look to go buy something. I'm like, twelve days for shipping. <laughs> Are you insane? First of all, who's shipping in twelve days still? <laughs> yeah, like absolutely not. Right. Right. Like, but if you have, see it. Yeah. Or even with messaging, and people also feel like, you know, that they deserve a response right away, mm-hmm. and like it's just all of us in our heads being like, where you know, yeah. Like I'll check and be like yeah how you know so yeah but no one's no one's i don't think there's enough people talking about it thoughtfully um what social media has really done to the human race because i don't really think we know yet yeah. the positives and negatives but i think the 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 overall dopamine mm-hmm. i can see the difference if we don't post for like a week or don't consume for a week mm-hmm. you feel different than when you're doing it yeah or you even feel happier when you can post something and then check every hour and just go, ooh, yeah. getting good. Re- ooh, we'll get ooh, a little, ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. get you a little actually alert. actually feel Well, literally, good. if you scroll Instagram, that's um, like Vegas, like a slot machine. Like the psychologist mm. that helped develop Instagram figured out how to hone in on that addictive sure. quality. So I have some friends that will go on their Instagram and they'll just scroll and scroll and scroll and they don't, like, you lose them. And, mm. and you're like, what are, we're not even, what are we looking, what, what are we getting out of this? But it's like a way to kill time. Because we're no longer really able to just sit in our own heads hmm. and just like sit down and mindfully drink a cup of coffee or eat your sure. dinner in quiet with nothing going on. We can't do that anymore. But what's interesting is our brains are still the old hardwiring, right? So like they're not used to all this technology yet. So our brains still need that calmness, that mindfulness, and yeah. we're not giving it any of that. And so... It'll be interesting to see where we go to. You where know, do you think it is going to go? I don't know. I, there will be positives and negatives, as with all sure. things. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if there's a way to even compare it to anything. Well, the only thing I think we can compare it to is when, we, which we discussed on the last podcast, when the printing press was invented... And that, that freaked everybody out because the Catholic Church was in charge and they had the one copy of the Bible and then the printing press came out and everybody got copies yeah. and they're like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember saying. No, you guys were saying Jesus did and, and it, it kind of turned everything on its head. So I think that social media, us having access to things we didn't originally have access to in that way, um, is you can kind of compare it, but we've definitely never been in a place like this that everyone has access though even with the printing press there were people in charge of what was printed right now all hmm. seven billion people or eight billion however many is there their are own now. little printing press and if you say something witty enough or get enough engagement the algorithm will reward you yeah. and it doesn't matter if you are because back in the day and i don't know if this is this obviously is a good thing that everyone has an equal voice but back in the day it seemed like on certain topics you would want someone qualified yeah. like if you're going to talk about intermittent fasting it's from a doctor who studied it for 27 right. years who's on a network that not kevin is... who googled it and <laughs> read an article on health.com and now he's an intermittent sure. fasting sure. expert it but it's like anyone can can talk about anything yeah. and but then again people are getting smarter like we didn't go to school for anything we learned like hmm. a lot of people in fitness can google it sure. and learn yeah. and but that but i i think 
if Kevin wasn't educated, if Kevin just read two lines. But um, but, but I the think... problem is because we have access to information, we're more arrogant with it now. Hmm. We're more arrogant with how we go. Well, uh, you know, I know this because I googled it. It's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> really? All right, don't listen to anything I have to say. I want it backed up with personal experiences. Mm -hmm. Nothing more frustrating when people are telling stories of other people. It's yeah. like we reference other people, but then we share how that knowledge or that piece of information we learned from this person and how we applied it to our yes. life. Yeah. Now here's my personal experience with what I've learned. Because yes. mm -hmm. there's so many things that I refuse to talk about because I'm like, I haven't had enough of a personal experience that I just don't feel authentic sharing it because I'm just kind of curating other people's info mm -hmm. where... You're in the minority though. That's <laughs> true. Well, I just think I'm just seeing all the... Like when you just when you just when you finally open your eyes and you see, like in a different light. Like and and I I always talk about this because I specifically remember you you know me back then. Like I just wasn't the same person at twenty two. Of course not. None I wasn't of us are. thoughtful. Yeah. I probably wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's like I have made that conscious decision to just care and start. And how much questioning better things. do you feel because of that? I feel a hundred percent better, yeah. but I do feel a little more lost. Because mm. I don't want to impose my views or what I've learned on people as like they should do it. I don't mm. want to ever come off judgy. I never want to come mm. off like, oh, look how much I know. Mm -hmm. But I also at the same time just feel sometimes disconnected. Like how you were saying about like when I meet a guy and I'm chatting with him, like like I, I'm at a point in my life I cannot go back. Right. Like there's no right. way now like – when I see like an interview with someone or you hear someone talking, you're just like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't feel like I'm better, right. but there's just no way I could ever a date a person or be friends with a person or go into business with somebody mm -hmm. who I can clearly see does not even share an open perspective right. of the world or in a thoughtful way. They have much growing to do. Right. Hmm. Right. And, and you can't go back. And what's interesting here in this town is I feel like this town allows you to stunt your growth. Oh, yeah. You can totally decide to be that Peter Pan. And I think that's one of the hard things about dating out here is that you can get this adoration for what you do. Yeah. And instead of internalizing you're on a show and you have these people who love you and, and you are attractive and charismatic and, and, and internalize that and be grateful that you get to wake up every day and do what you love and have people that watch you do what you love and appreciate it and go, I'm going to take that, appreciate it, digest it and learn more and keep working on myself and keep going to therapy and reading books and, and experiencing things and getting to that next, next, next level, most people choose the easier route and that's just take the adoration and just oh yeah be stay that young, like, 40-year-old going out to a club getting wasted every night and not want to grow. Yeah. Growing is so much harder. It takes so much more work. And, and I feel like it's hard to find people out here that, like, want to do the work. Well, we even watched Honey Boy last night, which oh my gosh, it was so, so good. good! I can't believe it took us that long. But and I can't believe Shia didn't get a a nom for that. Talking that about blows that. my mind because you know what? I love Brad Pitt, but like, come on, come! I, I would give Shia the Academy Award over that I know. for I know that or Peanut Butter Falcon. I didn't both see that of one. them really good. You gotta see it; it's amazing. But if we're I talking about both, just yeah. oh, you did solid act. Just a character. Oh my god! Mm. And Brad Pitt was wonderful, like I said. But like, I know. But anyway, I, I digress. Know. So you saw Honey Boy. Well, yeah, and it it was crazy to speak on that note when I was watching Shia in that. I literally thought he was his father, and I thought yeah. this little boy was him. You know, like it was just so good. Yeah. But it just kind of goes to show, like when you're thrown into the industry, and I mean, he was so young because he had a lot of crazy stuff happen to him, obviously. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's kind of what ha happens with no guidance, lots of money, fame. You just kind of lose your... Get into this weird sheltered yeah. world, but... and if you don't have a family around you that's like, Solid. you ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think, well, that's what, that's what I think I'm kind of craving at this point, and of just, I don't know what it's like to live any other life like, mm -hmm. here we are, and I'm sharing these perspectives, and people are like, I'm 47 years old, and I grew up in Nebraska, or I'm 47 years old, I grew up in Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. Like, your whole life experience is, yeah, what you're learning, Freddie, but you're also taking it from being 18 to 32 years old in Los Angeles in the acting mm -hmm. entertainment. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, our way we see the world 
is shaped by where we've grown up. Mm -hmm. And I'm so curious, what will I be like, wow, this is so much better, or things that I'll miss. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to live somewhere for three, five, ten years Mm -hmm. outside of L.A. and be like, oh, wow, L.A. is like, I miss this part. Or I didn't realize people were so hospitable in the South. Or... Yeah. You know what I mean? All like we're just consumed great. by. Um, but that's like even when we moved back from Pasadena, literally huh. coming just that to, change coming to Studio City. I was like, I feel like the energy of the yeah. city, and I loved it. And you know, you get used to it. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh. yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> but you really could feel it. It was such a different vibe. Just the change from Pasadena to here, which is like thirty minutes. You, you know? know, I think this this sector of Los Angeles, the Valley, Santa Monica, Culver City, this little area is like a very, it's got a very weird heartbeat. And Mm -hmm. if you're in it and you understand it, especially if you, we've all been here since we were 18, right? To 32-ish. So we've all been here over a decade and it's really crazy to sit and talk to people who have either never been to LA or, or, you know, that it, it's two completely different worlds. I enjoy the beautiful mess yeah. that this is. Yeah. And I think you just have to navigate where to live, who to spend time with, mm-hmm. and you can kind of siphon the, the good out. Mm-hmm. If I think if you get caught, like I more, I more feel bad for people when they're just like, you can see them a mile away. Uh, they're just like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, how about, I'm like, how long you been here? I'm like, I'm thinking 13 months. And they're like, eight months, nine months. I'm yeah. from so and so. I'm like, oh yeah. my God, you remind Just me of me. Like, the bus. I'm telling you, the world <laughs> you is love so to see it. different. Yeah. It's so oh, yeah. different when you, like, I thought I was so cool. I know. I was blasting music, hanging out, like in the convertible. Oh. I thought I had made it at like Just 23 years old because I was here mm-hmm. and associated with the hottest clubs, seeing celebrities, mm-hmm. partying oh, with yeah. celebrities. I'm like, I made it. And I was. I was a guest. I didn't even, yeah. I wasn't, my name wasn't in the lights. Yeah. Or you realize even th- as you garner more and more success, it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> it doesn't. No. And it's, that's um, one of the most amazing things about Kobe Bryant and his Mamba mentality is it's not just about being a savage on the court and being able to compart- compartmentalize. It was also, he talks about in his book, um, waking up every morning and feeling sad and you think like how could Kobe Bryant wake up every morning and feel sad and what I think that is is when you're hardwired like him when you're hardwired like us you're a creative one of the tough things about being a creative that people don't really talk about because you talk about like oh you do what you love and you you know blah 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 you're creative and all this amazing stuff but they don't talk about the other side and that's um, your brain is always going a thousand miles an hour so when Kobe says he wakes up sad it's because that's how it, that's the chaos and the creativity in his brain is a superpower, but it can also be your Achilles heel. Mm. So he gets up at, th- he got, oh, I don't know. He was, got. Was this after he retired or during? After he retired. That's when he said he was sad. Yeah, when he wrote the Mamba Mentality book. I, th- uh, I think I should really read that. A hundred percent should. Huh. Um, but when he woke up at three, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. No, 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 you're okay. But he, and you realize, because you hear these stories, Kobe woke up at 3.30 in the morning and would shoot 15,000 baskets, and you're like, man, I wish I had that work, work ethic. But you read this book and you go, oh, he didn't want to be up at 3.30 shooting baskets. He literally had to, because that's how he would combat waking up feeling unfulfilled and feeling sad. Hmm. He'd have to put that nervous energy to work. And I think our goal as creative people is to figure out how do we put our nervous energy to work. Because it doesn't matter what you book, what award you win, who you date, what you end up with, how much money you have, how big your mansion is. It's how are you finding fulfillment? How are you harnessing that nervous creative that you have that you don't know what to do with. The same reason my dad gets up at four in the morning and goes on an hour-long walk every day. And you, when you sit back and you look at that, you go, oh my gosh, dad, you're so motivated. And you, oh, this is amazing. And what you're learning and your growth from this. And he's like, I don't do this because I want to. I do this because I have to. I get up at 3.30 and I am anxious as heck. And I get up and I gotta go. So I, I have to do this. And instead of being like, becoming a victim to that, he's like, okay, well then if I have to get up and go, I'm gonna get up and go. I'm gonna make that decision. Mm -hmm. And I have to make that decision every day and it's gonna suck because it's 3.30 in the morning, but I'm up and I'm gonna make that decision. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of 
um, creatives take drugs because I think that's how you can kind of try and Become run away from present. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And oh. like Mac Miller would talk about, he would take drugs because then he could be alone in his room and have a whole entertaining time in his room by himself because he's on whatever. Yeah. And James Taylor was an intense heroin addict for like 20 years of his life. And he, yeah, he almost died so many times. He's one of my favorite artists in the whole world. And he, for like 20 years, he, his dad would pull him out of um, ditches. And, you know, when he gave up drugs, he would work out for three hours a day. And that's how he got hit. That was his way of getting his creative, nervous energy out. Just working out hard three hours a day. And he still does that to this day. He has to do that. And you have to keep, like, one-upping. Yeah. Like, the more, like, your bar was set so low because you were just happy to be like, oh, my gosh, I get one line in something. Mm -hmm. And, but then you start setting this bar where the next bar, you're kind of comparing it to what it was like being new to booking a Mm co-star, which is not that actually difficult once you obtain the skill. But to go next level the amount of work and and but then you actually start believing you can do it Mm -hmm. you start getting success so your anxiety Mm -hmm. starts growing because you're like if i've accomplished this i saw this i can do more Mm -hmm. and then you're like i can do more i can do more and i think this needs to be talked about a lot more because my anxiety over the past i never really had it my first like eight years out here Mm -hmm. i don't know why Mm. i don't know but the past four years, it's gradually become more present in my life that I was like, oh, like, why? Mm-hmm. What the hell is all this? Well, you got to think, too, like, everything we've gone through. Like, ignorance is such bliss. You are out here. You're young. Everything's working. And then, you know, even, like, with us, like, went through our tragedy, our car accident, getting money stolen. Like, de- just dealing with all sorts yeah. of things. I mean, life. we've all gone through our own tragedies. Life comes at fast. <laughs> Yeah. That's and true. yeah, and once you get older, it's only normal that you go through stuff. Mm-hmm. It just is life. When you have to make the decision to continue to be an active participant in your own life. Mm-hmm. So like my dad was like, I should retire. This is I'm at the age where society tells me I have to retire. He's like, I'm buckling down and working even harder. He's like, I got 20 good years to get the rest of the shit done that I want to get done, and I'm going to do it. And we've he's got friends that have retired, and God bless him, live your life, do what you want to yeah. do. But my dad was like, that's the last thing I can do right now is retire. And, I, and, and he's found this new life and this new hope at his age. So it doesn't matter what age you are either. But the, the anxiety thing is really fascinating to me um because of what you were just saying that and Kobe says in his book he's like all right well once I win a championship I'll be happy okay I'll win a two okay once I get a gold medal at the Olympics I'll be happy okay once I get three four five and he was never okay once I win an Oscar I'll be it wins an Oscar hmm. and he realized that you have to find fulfillment each day and that's also where relationships and love come into play because especially when you're hardwired to go create in a competitive industry like an athlete or an actor or actress, um, no matter the success you garner, you can be grateful for it, but you realize it's not going to fulfill you all the way. Mm -hmm. Your fulfillment's going to come in how you are as a human being, what you give back, who you share your bed with, who you decide to be vulnerable with, who your friends are, who you let into your life. And it wasn't, I don't think until Kobe Bryant had his daughters and really made the decision to be a good dad that he was able to kind of find this freedom and this this happiness outside of what he thought was going to be the only thing that would make him happy. Mm-hmm. And I think we can take a lot from that. I, yeah. I take a lot yeah. from that. I was thinking once. like, well, once I book this, I'll be good. Once I win this, I'll be good. And you, you book things and you get acknowledged for things and, and you're like, why don't I feel... Why am I not, this is not, I don't feel how I thought I was going to feel. Mm-hmm. And you realize you need to, you need to find those feelings outside Elsewhere, of, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and also oh, too, you know, anxiety's mm-hmm. always been there for people. Yeah. You know, it's always been there. But with social media now, I know it's 10 x for everyone, the anxiety. And like, we were even at a birthday party the other night and the amount of people that talked about meditating and meditation mm-hmm. apps, I mean... That was in a conversation five, ten years ago. Yeah. 
not as popular as it is now. And like, even for me, like, I feel like I, I need it, Yeah. you know, to unplug. Like the mm-hmm. kind of vacay I want to go on now is where I'm unplugging, journaling in the mm-hmm. wilderness mm-hmm. by a creek. Like, that's what I need. 100%. And it's just... Or before you would go, like, like the idea of, like, seven friends hopping in, like, a party bus and going to Vegas seemed like the best thing to do which actually still seems awesome still would maybe be fun depending on who we got (laughs) yeah um but that just seems like you wouldn't actually be recharged you'd actually come back like more More screwed up yeah where now it's just like imagine just going with a a group of friends and just like going like out on the water or chilling or just sitting around a cabin or just talking about stories like you would come back feeling refreshed for Mm -hmm. this like do 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 innovate you know like this inundated kind of day of just constant um you know, and it just never seems enough. Like, even for yeah. us, like, we're always doing stuff, and it just never seems enough. I'm like... Well, because you're constantly being reminded all the things that other people want you to know they may or may not be doing. So, <laughs> you, you, yeah. may, you may... I, I'm not going to lie. I've posted pictures being like, oh, this is so fun, and it's like a year old. Of course. And I'm like, I have nothing to post, so I'm going to post this from this what time. What can and I just, recycle? So, yeah, yeah, what, what, <laughs> God, what can I, ugh, I have to post something since it's been two weeks, I'm going to get in trouble, so like, uh, okay, here's a video I took a year and a half ago in Colorado, and I'll just pretend I'm doing it here, and then somebody's going to see that and go, oh my God, Molly looks like she's having so mm. much fun, and Molly's not having any fun, she's sitting on her couch <laughs> watching Sports Center. but now you think I'm having fun, so now you have anxiety, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And so that's why I think meditation is becoming Ooh. such a good, important thing. Because it's like, <gasps> yeah. okay, I'm just going to yeah. remember that most of us are just sitting in our homes watching Sports Center. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just that's, chilling. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Log yeah. cabin sounds pretty dang good now. Hey, man. Seriously. That's Seriously. why it'll be, good. it'll be good to do, uh, like, we're 100% going to, because we, we were also thinking, of of be, I've always had a schedule and yeah we had a week off for like hiatus and stuff but during that week off you wanted to go to the bank go to the grocery store go do things mm-hmm. the last thing you ever want to do on hiatus is like work seven episodes on the show go to Hawaii right. for seven days come back jet lagged and then try to perform at 8 45 right. in the morning so I right. never really felt like I could so we we're like well, we got some time let's go all the auditions are on yeah. tape these days which mm-hmm. I love um but we're like we can pack up these cameras and we can do our podcast yeah on the road yeah. and just like go travel a little bit and i think a great first stop should be new orleans yeah mm. heck yeah and to be able to like talk about our experiences as yeah. we go to these new places and get some beads get some, get some beads, beads. <laughs> it doesn't work when a guy shows his nips though. you would think not <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> huh. we will find out I 2020 the food there is so good too like out that's of this gonna be world. the hardest thing it's gonna because you have to eat really healthy because we're you're on like this of course this is a drug show and you gotta you know be in shape and and Elise's in such amazing shape that i'm always like well i, I gotta be in really good shape too so you, you go to new orleans you're like well i'm just gonna enjoy my vegetables <laughs> Maybe just do one cheat a week. Yeah, I I will still one hundred percent cheat all the time because I love food. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're we're on a good. Uh, we're just on a good, healthy, boring ass routine right now. Like yeah. low calories, no yeah. drinking really. Just like yeah. But it'll be worth it because then you can go to New Orleans and eat like crap yeah. for a week yeah, and it's no big deal. Yeah. So exactly. I'm trying to look into my future. Great. I'll lo- I'll just look forward to that. I'll just keep reminding myself when Freddie looks like I'm out. April twenty third. April April tenth. April tenth. <laughs> One of the two. It'll all it'll all depend on the day. Oh um, my gosh. But um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be it'll be exciting and and congratulations to you because Thank that's you. amazing. Yes, girl, we're so excited um, and proud of you. Yeah. I'm so I'm so grateful, man. Over the moon excited. And I'm That's glad everything so, you worked so out. so deserve it. Yeah. So. For your home yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, yes. <laughs> yes. I can't wait. And yeah, fellas, but thanks for coming back. We were, I was like, we, we, I was like, we gotta have Molly on. I was like, but I think, was she just on like, like a month or two ago? It felt like. That's what it felt like. And yeah. then it's been four months. That's insane. And I was like, so we can't wait four months again. I, I always enjoy just like kicking it and yeah. chatting. And, well, uh, we're gonna have to go visit her or else it will be four months. Yes. So, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> she's gone next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll give her enough time to find like the best places to eat, I and like we'll that. just go and like, I like that. Yeah, and have some fun. So perfect. 
Well, thank you for chatting with yes, us and, of course. and sharing all of your knowledge and great energy with the world. And thank you. So, uh, but yeah, uh, thank you all for watching and tuning in. And uh, until next time, bye.